Good evening, YouTube. I don't feel like going to sleep yet, and there's this new YouTube channel talking about Trisha stuff called Huang Li. I'm going to put a link in the description. And they came out with this 43 minute long video called Trisha Paytas is Irredeemable, Angelica's Labyrinth. I don't know who Angelica is, but I want to react to this together because it seems ridiculous. Um, um, I even found out about it because of Pearl Swirl. Y'all check her out. She does like reaction videos to drama. She is so funny. And she's a Dallas girl like me, like you, you sabe. Um, and my jaw was dropping the entire time. So I was like, uh-uh. Oh. I was begging her, you have to do a part two. And I was like, you know what? I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to just do my own. So um, we're going to watch it. I think I'll do it at like 1.25 speed. So, so we're not here. But um, if you're new to my channel, I literally post whatever I want. So if you subscribe, you subscribe for the vibes. I don't edit my videos. We shoot it raw. If you're down. You down. Okay. Uh, let me fix the screen so it's like big. Hold up. Okay, this is how they do it, right? Yeah, I'm like a I'm a reaction. I'm a I'm a YouTuber. I will hopefully fall asleep after this. So let's go. Why hello there. In this video, we're going to be talking about Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas is an online media personality who's been featured in shows like My Strange Addiction and music videos like Eminem's We Made You. She's been active on YouTube since 2007 and has made friends among the likes of Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, David Dobrik, and other YouTubers with checkered reputations to say the least. She's recently come under fire after her abrupt departure from the popular H3H3 produced Frenemies podcast. After her departure, she made hours upon hours upon hours of content demonizing Ethan Klein, co-founder of H3H3 Productions, who also happens to be her future brother-in-law. She had previously left under less than appropriate terms twice before after hurling vulgarities on air at Ethan's wife, her future sister-in-law, Ela Klein, which is not uncommon for her. However, before we get into her abusive behavior throughout her YouTube career, I want to preface this video with a disclaimer. Many, including myself, have ignorantly defended Trisha's poor behavior without knowing the full scope of her actions because she claims to have borderline personality disorder. Her borderline personality disorder was self-diagnosed, and she has previously claimed to have several different mental illnesses which were abundantly self-diagnosed. We will also expand on those events as well. Borderline personality, though, is characterized through impulsivity, poor self-image, emotional instability, and impaired social relationships, particularly romantic relationships. They need a lot of love and struggle with a sense of identity, but they are not inherently abusive. BPD does not mean you are an abusive person, nor does any mental illness excuse abuse. Some famous alleged cases of BPD We're include Marilyn like Monroe, who struggled with substance abuse Sam and endured physical and or emotional abuse at the hands of her husbands, Joe DiMaggio and Arthur Miller. She used her star power to help smaller actresses, particularly black entertainers, during the 1950s. Princess Diana, who struggled with self-image and an eating disorder for years, while the royal family abused her to hide Prince Charles' affair with Camilla, used her political power to help during the AIDS crisis against the royal family's wishes. And Jim Carrey, who's very open about his mental health issues and also endured abusive relationships, one culminating in a very public tragedy, used his star power to make children laugh and influence a generation. None of these people were or are abusive. In fact, they were more vulnerable to being abused because of their borderline personality disorder. And the stigma that borderline personality disorder entails abuse is one many sufferers wish to clarify isn't true. With that disclaimer out of the way, anyone trying to excuse Trisha Paytas' actions after this video are ultimately siding with a predator. Ooh, okay, let's see the physical It's been revealed abuse. that Trisha Paytas left bruises on her current fiance, Moses' arm. After breaking into his phone, scrolling through his messages, and finding romantic sexual exchanges between him and other women while he and Trisha Paytas were oh, friends with Oh, that's why she Even hit him? 
and Trisha had been dating exclusively at this point, there's no excuse for anyone to leave bruises on another person's body, especially in this context. Furthermore, Trisha also expressed her only wanting to have sex with Moses to break his heart and annoy Ethan Klein, her That's future frenemy's so co-host. So why get upset over someone you don't have genuine feelings for messaging other people? Moses revealed oh, to a catfish account that he didn't have feelings for Trisha, and he found her threatening, but matters turned dire when Trisha allegedly threatened to kill herself if Moses left her. Mm -hmm. She also allegedly threw his keys into the distance, so he was unable to physically leave her for 12 hours, and Moses himself has expressed that Trisha has ruined his life. Put a finger down if they've ruined your life. He currently defends if Trisha and minimizes her feud with Ethan Klein as a battling between entertainers. However, this isn't new behavior for Trisha Paytas. It's also been revealed that Jason Nash currently suffers from PTSD after his relationship with Trisha Paytas, leaving him <laughs> unable to develop new relationships. The alleged abuse Are includes chasing Jason Nash with a knife, crashing her car into his home where he shares custody of his children, and her running around naked in a hotel hallway while Jason barricaded inside another hotel room, fearing she might kill him that night. I thought she was gonna kill me in my sleep. Oh my god, speed. Jason literally started so like much. packing his stuff. He's like, Trisha, I have kids, I have kids, I gotta look out for myself, I have to go get a different room. And I'm like, I was like That's because she was running around the hotel. Tell. Totally naked, screaming and crying. <laughs> you thought she was gonna kill me? Yeah, I thought like she was gonna cut me up, like cut me up in my sleeve. And then we were right on the water, so she could just throw my body right in there. Oh and, 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 and you guys didn't vlog it? No, it was so serious. That I didn't. <laughs> His first Jason reaction is, "You didn't vlog that." Excuse her behavior, because that's how victims operate during a relationship. What are you doing? Despite this, I don't think a mob of strangers should place pressure on Moses to leave Trisha. That's a family matter for his close friends and family to handle. In both cases though, when the men decided to break up with Trisha, she tried sending a hate mob for both of them, assassinating their characters in the public and alleging pedophilia accusations against them. I do want to add that this whole event came after they or her and her boyfriend got into a fight and she already made a video about him accusing him of flirting with underage girls which she's since retracted it's totally different first of all it's totally different because well, I, I i know you guys had a nasty breakup you drove your car into his house and stuff like that so i just didn't want to be involved and i saw you and i i i left because i didn't want to have an interaction now if these accusations are true <laughs> both men deserve to that's face when repercussions. He... however it's curious that's when she was like oh i saw that guy was jeff wittick it's just like, I saw him at a coffee place, and when he saw me, he 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 left. He dodged me, and he's basically like, I heard about how you drove a car into your ex's house, so I just didn't want to deal with you ever. i curious to know that she only levels these accusations after a breakup and dismisses them when they get back mm -hmm. together. Hindsight yep. is always twenty twenty, but if you realize you've been with a pedophile, who would get back together with them? Furthermore, it's ironic to call someone else a predator when there's abundant evidence indicating that the real predator is actually Trisha Paytas. Mm. Book doesn't... It doesn't look down upon rape. Trisha Paytas made a video recounting how Ethan Klein mentioned a scene from her OnlyFans to her mother and sister at Disneyland. She alludes to how Ethan is her manager, implying his Ew. behavior is sexually harassing, despite demanding 50% of earnings from the Frenemies podcast as an equal co-host and not as his employee. Although this is incredibly awkward for any typical family gathering, Trisha Paytas featured her biological sister, who also has an OnlyFans, and biological mother on her OnlyFans account. They were all wearing bikinis together, wrestling in a sexual context. I've heard there's a video of you on OnlyFans of oh. you wrestling your sister topless okay. with your mom in the bed referee. First of all, we're not wrestling topless. <laughs> we're in swimsuits. We're in like red swimsuits. Why oh. is it on OnlyFans though? That seems kind of... Yeah, because I think it's more like, well, for money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so are you comfortable with people beating off to you and your whole family? That seems odd. Yeah, why? I feel like that's a natural thing. Mm, yeah, why? But I, <laughs> I, just, I find you. it funny. And or three incest dreams are actually very normal, and you're not a weirdo and a freak for having them. You can't control what your dreams are. It just means um, you want to be closer to that person. Um, so if you have a dream like having sex with your dad or Ew. your mom or sister, you want to be closer mm. to that person and have a closer relationship with them. Which actually I don't know what it was about the way that she kind of, <laughs> you know kind of chuckled after she said if you dream about your dad that just made me so oh she kind of is true with mine anyways um it's totally gross when you wake up in the morning you're like oh my god i need a shower but it's 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 kind of normal so don't be like a freak 
Furthermore, her public persona is highly cringe sexual, with her having made videos like 100 layers of cum on my face, so I don't blame I Ethan for that. assuming they knew about the scene in question and believing they'd laugh at a lighthearted joke. The irony though is that Trisha Paytas has maliciously sexually harassed Ethan Klein since the beginning of their acquaintance. Since the beginning, Trisha Paytas has heavily flirted with Ethan Klein in front of his wife, Ela Klein. I He's think so you're... The connection. No, there's, there's no chemistry. There's no chemistry, there's no connection. <laughs> and poor Ela, like, she's laughing. Little does she know that <laughs> this is the beginning of a nightmare. There's not, I promise. <laughs> you, you did, I did notice that in your videos when you talk about me, she's winking at me and, uh, moving her shoulders in a way that do you think that's appropriate in front of my wife what are I you doing don't, i don't, know, I don't doing think it. it's appropriate i'm not doing it. can you see your penis over your belly in the shower some people have you had sex with in your life i just had such a vivid dream of you like getting banged by two guys and i was like oh my god this is so awkward <laughs> fine okay let's talk about um hands your our collab do you oh my god, i don't know what to ask do you want to have sex with me <laughs> made undermining comments about their marriage stating trisha would treat ethan better than Ela tweeting how she wants to have sex with Ethan Klein, sending unsolicited photos of I her I don't understand vagina. this. Is this, like, her way of, like, tr trying to dominate men? And is, is this, like, just the only way she understands how to have relationships with men or something? That to Ethan Klein, an unwilling participant and married man, insisting they do a sex scene on her OnlyFans. And do, do you understand, Moses, that the girl you're apparently dating has sent me, personally me, tweeted at me pictures of her vagina? Right. Do you understand <laughs> what you're like, doing? Right. Think that's a problem. Do you un do problem. even understand? <laughs> she, the girl that you're apparently dating, it which you like think Moses, is funny, please. wanted to have a thruffle please. with your sister right. and your brother-in-law. True. Why don't you go True. cheat on Jason Moore? <laughs> What were you doing in Colorado? I'm seeing my family. Seeing your family? I don't know what kind of backwards <laughs> twist life you had. You were having sex with your brother. <laughs> ew, 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 I wish. You wish? I do. I love incest. Um, that's one of my ew, I wish. Is brother, sister. Incest, daddy, daughter, mommy, son. Brother and sister, brother really? Brother and sister. It's my favorite. How do you play Just it? like, ooh, mom's gonna hear us. Be quiet. <laughs> Pressuring him into confessing sexual feelings for her for months that don't exist and even pleasuring herself this while working on the so front of his podcast the clips of Ethan Klein and his wife on their main ew. H3H3 podcast. The makeup was cute though. Let me ew. make myself ew. clear. I don't, I don't she made a face. video pleasuring herself to Ethan and Ela mm. talking on their H3H3 mm. podcast. Ethan has time and time again dismissed this harassment, especially after Trisha, most likely considering the previous physical abuse and her pressuring Jason Nash into marriage, pressured Moses into an engagement. There's one that Elvis marries you. And how iconic would that be? I don't know, I think that's a big decision. Why? Oh yeah, I remember. Cause like, I don't know. She kept dogging him, like, he proposed to me, to get married, he's like, I don't know. The peace, <laughs> even though he was her target for sexual harassment. It's also curious how every time Trisha stormed off the podcast, unprofessionally I might add, it was always because Ela Klein, Ethan's wife, came up. Trisha paid us upon yeah, having her sexual advances that before. to Ethan rebuffed, he said launched that. an onslaught against Ethan's family life. Ela is Your a life topic is sad and pathetic and somehow. mine is happy, thriving, so good mine luck, is not have sad. fun, on uh, your beach weekend, eating room service, trying to get pregnant, have fun with that. I just wanna know like, how messed up is she in the head? How miserable of a person is she to to think going to the beach, to a beachfront hotel with your wife, eating room service and having relations? How is that a diss? Like how unstable is she that something as deliciously wholesome as that? Like, oh my God, like I am dreaming of that. We're, my partner and I are planning a vacation to do exactly that people pay money to do exactly that and she's like <laughs> you're losing <laughs> you're boring <laughs> that doesn't sound sad and pathetic mm. that sounds like a good family life like i have good fulfilling and good deep roots with a wife that i've been married to for a long time i've got a family that we're trying to build mm -hmm. and i've got another time when Ethan <laughs> politely asked his wife not be mentioned in the podcast per his wife's request to also keep the peace in the family, Trisha called his wife on air the C word and remarked upon how Ethan treats his wife like a princess, but not her. 
I just hate people who think they're just too fucking good for shit. It's not she's you too good. Fucking, she has a fucking podcast. When you have a podcast, okay. you're talked about. Your life's talked about. You guys talked about Moses and Dude, me. you well before we did this she, podcast. You guys talked about us. Never once asked me anything. No, it's because you always make the you same guys comment about her. Asked me one thing this summer, or when we Moses started dating. You never, but you guys talked about. Me. I don't even know what you're on me. about. This, all this she shit, just doesn't want you. Good. All, she's, she's too not good. Too good. Don't fucking mention my name. Meanwhile, you guys can talk about whoever you want. You guys talked about me all spring when I without you can talk about me. whatever you want too. And finally, the last fight was due to e that. Now that I have this lens that Trisha is a narcissist, that was so narcissistic. That was like, wow, that's so narcissistic. That scene. Ethan's pregnancy announcement on the Frenemies podcast. Trisha had a severe issue with his mentioning the announcement, stating he had already mentioned it in his other podcast. So why mention it again? It was like pregnancy announcement, which is I'm happy to talk about the pregnancy. We but, talked a lot about the pregnancy. Here. But it wasn't the pregnancy announcement. H3 Live was. It's your guys' thing, which I'm happy to talk about. I'm happy for you guys. But to say like, oh, we don't recycle things. It's like, you know, you do. And it's fine. But I don't make it the same title because it's not an announcement. We're talking about your I wouldn't pregnancy. say recycling. It's a different conversation. The original one was Trisha's going to like something. An it didn't have to be about me. But I'm just saying like the fact that it's a pregnancy announcement again when it's not a pregnancy announcement because I'm not pregnant. You know what I mean? We're talking about your oh, guys' pregnancy. It was an announcement. You announced on H3 Live. Despite this child being her future niece or why do why do you just I feel like I need a headache medicine after that that one clip or nephew. She again stormed off after undermining Ethan's attempts to keep the peace, yet again, and made hours upon hours of content accusing Ethan of everything leveled at her. Furthermore, both Moses and Jason have repeatedly stated that Trisha forces them to have sex with her despite their unwillingness. Put a finger oh, down gross. if they were forced to sexually. I yes. wouldn't care. You wouldn't care. They all were in little race car outfits. What am I supposed to do? Not look at their hogs? Hmm? Trisha, you need to go get some serious help. Maybe if you didn't and we had sex this morning, I would have been fine. Maybe it's none of your business. Like, we've, we've met a few Strange. times in real life. And, I mean, the first time we met, you flashed me to get there as Also, the possible. flashing was and consensual. Don't make it seem like I just exposed myself to you guys. No, Trisha, <laughs> I would not. I would okay. never add and you should stop getting naked in my house. She also tried publicly humiliating both of them by insulting their sexual performances with malice on her own failed podcast prior to Frenemies. He is a very socially awkward person. He might have something like Asperger's or something like that. So like, it's it's like, it's very cringe, but holy shit. Stop it. If a guy talks to you like this, run for the fucking hills. He hasn't been laid in fucking 20 years. Why do I always get the guys that are so fucking, they're so desperate and insecure. With this is ironic considering how she believes she was the renaissance to the H3H3 podcast when in reality she needed it more than they needed her. I'm a, I'm a fan of Louis C.K. So I'm worse than him. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You don't have a problem with what he did to women? Uh, what did he do? I don't oh, know. he like jerked off in front of women and stood in front of the door yeah. so they couldn't escape. And they weren't about it? Trisha Paytas has used her sex work as a means to emotionally hurt her partners when they offended her. And she pulls out her phone and shows me sucking some guy's cock. Trisha? Yeah, a picture of it. Jason? What? Why'd you do that? <laughs> I thought it was funny that I still had that. I was like, oh, look, there's a cock I thought it was funny. <laughs> you. Fake. Oh, I just thought that was funny. No, you were trying to hurt him. Dude, oh my god. When you understand how her mind works and you rewatch all these clips, because... We've been watching these clips in real time, and when you rewatch them, oh my god, it just, I have a pit in my stomach. a party the other day because <laughs> a girl sat on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> and you show him a picture of you sucking another dude's dick. funny. What you talk about is having sex with people, <laughs> including my dad, which is really weird. I didn't say that. Guys, in the comments, make sure you tell Trisha to stop talking about sexualizing my 70-year-old father. Why? I'm yeah. Trisha, who look how big his trunk is. That's not just a friend. And she wants to be part of the vlog squad? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I thought you were exclusive with Jason. I am. He's literally my friend for so long. How are you? Ooh. Oh. Take that, David. I don't care if she fucks around. Yeah, I do. <laughs> how do you feel about that? She's got pretty good taste. I, mean, I don't know. She's your girlfriend. You're supposed to say you're not. Oh, happy. yeah. I don't know if, I do. <laughs> if I pulled up with some girl just now, you would have flipped the fuck out. Who was that? He said you were singing. He was like, whenever Jason's in a good mood, he's singing. I'm like, oh, you were in a good mood? Did I have her a bite? I'm sure you can find a lot of things you can say. 
about anything that I put out there and twist it in a way that's, you know, destructive. This is why you are such a dangerous person, especially to be close with, because you'll take <laughs> something that I've told you, in, you'll take something that somebody told you in confidence and you'll use it, you'll weaponize it against them. That's that not true. Ethan has also yes, commented how odd it is that his brother-in-law's fiance sent him vagina photos. But to further compound on this, it's equally, if not even more odd for her to have pleasured herself to her fiance's little sister and husband out of spite for the several clashes they've had throughout the show. Furthermore, Moses admitted to Trisha not allowing him to speak to other women, not to like any other women's posts, and Jason followed the same rules. Down if they wouldn't let you hang out with the opposite sex. Put a finger down if they wouldn't let you like certain people's photos. Put a finger down if they got mad if you didn't respond in five minutes. she thinks this is cute. Put a finger down if they Ew. got physical or Ew. threw something at you. Put a finger oh, down no. if you got to keep your location services on. Put a finger down if they threatened to kill themselves if you tried to break up with them. You were declared 5150 that night, correct? Because I overdosed. You get 5150 yeah. if you attempted suicide. Yeah. It's not because so, I'm crazy as I try to kill myself. So then... Well, when you, you started making videos and stuff about Jason, I only heard Jason's. If you've seen um, the Beetlejuice musical, doesn't that make you think of? I may be suicidal, but Beetlejuice is not as if I lost my mind. <laughs> Tied of the story where he tried to avoid any uh, contact with you. Put a finger down if they've called you names. Put a finger down if they called you overly sensitive, but really they were just being mean. And lastly, when Trisha found Jason's daughter's shirt in his house, Trisha accused Jason of having an affair and lashed out against him. I think you have to be a lot less insecure about whether or not Jason is hooking up with other people. Like, Jason, what did she just do today? She found my daughter's shirt and was like, um, who was here last night? She <laughs> looks like a skinny girl and that would not fit me. Both men are highly uncomfortable around the idea of other women, and when others brought it up in jest, both men became highly unsettled. Out of all the Kardashians, <laughs> I'd probably pick her. You pick Chloe? Who to be friends with, not to be romantic with. Who would you be romantic with at the Kardashians? Kim. You were supposed to say nobody. Really? Compared compare to you. Kim Kardashian's very pretty. You're not allowed to talk about women. Oh, okay. It's also of note, as any person who suffered from abuse, the little details. Trisha looks down on these men violently and has expressed pride in controlling them just through her stare alone. This was particularly evident when Moses denied breaking up with Trisha over her physical abuse, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. That he broke up with you because you started like punching him. He's shaking his head no. Oh, okay. Y you said I could say everything. I did not punch him. <laughs> you said that's Wait, why. You what is that? Ethan was addressing her, asking if something happened, and instead of her confirming yes or no, she like looks to the supposed victim. What was that? Broke up with me because I punched you? <laughs> I went like this. Okay. This was also repeatedly evident in her treatment of Jason Nash. Additionally, everyone is entitled to privacy. Trisha repeatedly breaking into their phones, revealing their messages to the public, broadcasting their issues to the public, and inciting a hate Moses mob against them whenever good. they don't adapt to her commands Moses is textbook he's emotional and psychological abuse. She also exposed private details about Ethan's previous substance addiction during his more depressed years because he called her crazy in jest. When you're just not open about it. I don't think that that is a defining characteristic of who I am. I, I think that is a this. big thing. That makes sense. Why? Because you're on medication now and there's no shame or judgment in it. But like, hey, if you're going to shame me for being off meds, you should say, hey, I'm on meds. I'm not shaming you for what? being off meds. Mm, that's what it sounds like. You just, you just call me crazy, crazy but here's which what you means do. I'm off you know what medication. You just did? You, oh you're trying to God, see, yeah. this is why you are such a dangerous person. From what fans have seen, Moses treats Trisha like a princess, encouraging her to eat as she pleases and building her custom gifts, including a fridge. Which Jason, so on the other sweet. hand, made several comments critiquing Trisha's weight and eating habits. Yeah, However, this physical like objectification that. wasn't one-sided. Trisha yeah. constantly insulted Jason for his physical appearance in several ways. Look how skinny you look, though. Look at your arm. I'm so skinny. That's because I've been trying to work out. No, Jason is showing pictures of him skinny, and I'm like, he looks a lot older. I think he looks way older when you're skinnier. It's not like you're fat. You're very, like, normal. But when you were skinny, you looked like you were dying. I look like I was dying. Kind of. Okay, I think that was better. And for what it's worth, I am, like, and I know you're doing it for you, but I 
really don't like abs. I really don't like them. I think they feel really bad when you have sex. Babe. I just want to be able to like walk and not, not, not be like tight. <laughs> Neither negates the other, but depicting Trisha as a victim is a tactic often employed by abusers to cover up their tracks. Lastly, Trisha also seems to wreck through family lives without care for the impact. While dating Jason, the mother of Jason's children refused to let her kids around Trisha for obvious reasons. Trisha publicly insulted his ex-wife, a private figure, wedging tension between the co-parents, expecting people to attack the mother over a private boundary within a family. These are her children. Trisha at best is a stranger and a dangerous person to expose children around, particularly when she crashed her car into Jason's house where her children live. Mm -hmm. As alluded before, the Kleins have repeatedly tried keeping the peace with Trisha for the sake of Moses, <clears throat> Ela Klein's brother. But Trisha, despite their attempts at defusing the situation, escalates the situation, once again directing her attack at another woman. Ela Klein, unprompted, claiming Ela Klein's brother dislikes her and wants nothing to do with her. My Moses doesn't like you, and you guys don't like him, and that's cool. I'm See, that's happy the, to that you can't. That's stupid. But it's true. It's so well, true. Well, that's fucked up. That's the kind of assholes. that's the kind of shit you say that m makes Ela mad because you go, Moses doesn't like you, and so For what you're doing, like, oh, what you're doing is you're causing no. problems in their family. That's so not true. And that's fucked up. You told and Trisha she, this. She doesn't no want any more of that. You says it's like what the who the fuck are you, bitch? Say what? What did she say? She said I read it. I saw it because I was on fucking TikTok. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't read his private fucking. When I'm on TikTok and there's a message that comes up and I see it, I'm not reading it, I see it. Yeah, and no, I see you're my reading his private Anna. messages with his sister. You shouldn't do that. Oh my Once god. Again, this abuse against both women, Jason Nash's ex, who will remain unnamed for the sake of privacy, and Ela Klein, were unprompted, unwarranted, and only happened because they established a boundary which Trisha mm -hmm. refused to respect. And on mm -hmm. a side note, she also recently humiliated Gabby Hanna on her own podcast, who has her own set of issues not relevant to this video, yeah. after denying a two-year-long friendship and treating her with a false air of superiority. Only severed ties with Shane Dawson after he spread a rumor about her STD status, despite overwhelming evidence of him having pedophilic tendencies, a racist past, and a toxic friendship with Jeffree Star, which included blackmailing and manipulating other creators for their own financial benefits. And I think this is an error. So the rumor is that Shane told Gabby that uh, that Trisha has an STD. No one has really proven that yet, but that's not what made Trisha end the friendship. Um, or maybe it is. Maybe maybe it is. But Trisha claimed that the problem was that um, she was asking Shane to defend her for something after all of her videos defending him and he wouldn't or no 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 i think it was that she wanted shane to stop being friends with jeffree star because trish didn't like jeffree star anymore and shane is not gonna end his lucrative friendship with jeffree star for trisha i know um so that made trisha mad and so she started talking crap on shane and said and ended their friendship they reveal David Dobrik's checkered past over a personal vendetta against him and the vlog squad instead of for the honorable reason of trying to protect the victims. She, a grown woman, has attacked teenage TikTokers, the D'Amelio sisters, ironically, as we'll soon see, over a racist TikTok dance, and for having an attitude problem when she, a grown woman, also abandoned a group of very young girls at a party. Oh my gosh, that was so dumb. So the racist TikTok dance was like, it was some rap song that has the N-word. Okay, so it's like... Da -da 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 you know whatever like how music is so like they're doing the dance and then when it comes to the jigga word they're like they do this little motion and then keep dancing so trisha was like why did you do this on on the jigga word like <laughs> it was like what are you talking about it, she was like criticizing them for for like covering their mouth because it could symbolize that they're whispering the word or they're emphasizing that it's a word that they can't say when really they should have just ignored the word and everyone was like Trisha shut up like why are you talking about this why are, what is wrong with you we don't care to be assaulted by her friends at the time instead of intervening as an adult should 
To make matters worse, after Ethan refused to continue the Frenemies podcast with her, Trisha made attempts to reconnect with the vlog squad despite her onslaught against them over setting up and filming the assault of a young woman and their repeated involvement with predators. And make no mistake, Trisha Paytas intelligently characterizes her- It's like every time she leaves a group that was really lucrative for her, she regrets it and she wants to come back. Sound familiar? ...as an apologetic, ever-developing victim to her audience because she uses them to attack others over matters which should remain private or reported to the police. Not once did she expose a creator for honorable reasons. She's inherently an abusive person who's tricked her audience into believing she's a mentally ill victim to continue abusing those around her. Oof. Trisha Paytas wrote a song called Jungle Fever. The oh lyrics God. are very ignorant and stupid, so if you wish to skip over, please be my guest. No, but the lyrics skip, are as follows. So. I may be white, but I got needs too, and I gotta do what I feel like doing, so I'ma get out of the valley, go down to Englewood, and get me some. Jesus Christ. People stop and stare, they look at my body right past my face. People stop and stare, and stare a little more. Looks like I'm out of place, an interracial whore. Okay. <laughs> I can't help myself when I see a man in fat farm jeans, repping his team. Give me some cornrows with dreads, down to there. What's inside your pants really isn't fair. Bro, stop. Cause I got jungle fever. It's driving me insane. I've got jungle fever and I can't complain. When you, oh my god, okay. When you have jungle fever, you get sat. Jesus Christ. You get satisfied. So get some jungle fever and melt them inside. Huh? Bro, Melts I didn't even this part yet. Jesus Christ. Jamie Foxx is what? fine and LeBron makes me squeal. Take me to a Tyler Perry movie. It's a done deal. God, Jesus Christ. Get me home in bed. See the- <laughs> Jesus. See the top of my head. The man at air track said me thick keep your fat baby got back. Bro. Cause I got jungle fever. It's driving me insane. I've got jungle fever and I can't complain. When you have jungle fever, you get satisfied. So get some jungle fever and melt them inside. Cause I got jungle fever. It's driving me blah 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 blah. Basically repeats over and over again. So that was an abomination. But to break it down- not only does the name have racist implications coming from a white woman, but her fetishization and capitalization off of black men reveals how she sees black men as sex objects. Never once has she publicly dated a black man or had a romantic connection with a black man. In fact, Moses possesses the darkest complexion among Trisha Paytas' partners, with the rest being overwhelmingly blonde and blue-eyed. Yeah, she's, Plus, um, her mention of Inglewood is her attempt to feel some sort of street cred, which every basic white girl tries to possess now that it's trendy. Parts. But the closest they come to black impoverished neighborhoods are the gentrified- I'm sorry, I can only think of that guy as the dude in house of cards the dude who i just pitied who i just thought was just so pathetic <laughs> built upon their remains she's also said the n-word several times and says it's racist for her to not be able to use it which is an excuse many entitled white people make when boundaries are established between them and a culture they've oppressed i have to stop because i'm white like i can't i can't sing songs because i'm white that feels racist to me like you're not white so you can't sing that song you How can't sing that song, just don't say the There's word, a reason why she lives in a mansion in LA, yet me. only references poor black people in Englewood when she wants to make money off them and treat them like sex objects. Furthermore, mm -hmm. she sang NWA's F the Police while repeatedly mouthing and singing the N-word. You niggas want some Nick cake. If you eat. Straight from the underground, a young nigga got it back cause I'm- While also expressing surprise at the fact that police brutality still exists and addressing Black Lives Matter from her- I think they're using this to be like she did blackface. This is uh, the- Gyaru, I think it's called Gyaru style from Japan. Um, so if anybody tells you it's not actually blackface, it's it's the Japanese style. Just so you know, the Japanese style is blackface. It they they do it like that because they're trying to mimic blackness. The idea is that looking black is cool. So don't let anybody tell you, oh, no, it's from Japan. Yes, we know it's from Japan, and it was created to mimic black people. It's blackface! Perspective ...as a white woman, proclaiming how she feels rather than providing anything of substance to the movement. This is like, it feels like we're back in the 60s. It feels like we're, it's like we reverted to this, like, decades and decades of people dying and for this, and it, it's crazy to me. And while another reason I want to make this is like a lot of people think oh well I'm very white privileged and I, I, I can't relate and I, I can't like I can't relate um, to being black and being profiled based on my race I can't relate I to that I'm not going to pretend like I do um, what I can relate to is being a human being that has a family and um, uh, not a lot of humans watching can the video of that. Lando Castile I think is how you say his name his girlfriend recording his daughter in the back just like of him dying him being shot and then just watching him die 
you know, there's there's been debate in the past, like, oh, well, this guy was attacking the cops or he was coming at him. Like, this guy was I so in the driver's seat hear of the vehicle. This. Like, I do not want to hear her talk about that. Reaching for a li his license or It's like, the, the, this to me, Sorry, I think the debate, like, oh, well, skip. Elton Sterling, a human level. Skip. We're going to talk about these. I very white oriented. She also alludes to the debate of violent criminals when addressing an unarmed man's murder at the hands of the police and rants on and on about how we're all human beings, which is a measure to erase and distract from the point I don't see that one of human beings who share her complexion have colonized, enslaved, and continue to murder and abuse minorities. She also provides no sources in her description to support the Black Lives Matter movement and instead features lyrics from Michael Jackson's Heal the World. <laughs> She's also mocked Japanese culture Oh my god, She's claimed she be, to be an albino more black person, which is abundantly ridiculous oh. but indicative of a trend i miss that i miss that as cash she grab opportunities black, much huh? like her colonizing ancestors used us and continue to use us i financial can't believe i missed that one and i've always kind of stuck by that story until lately i don't no, no, know no, i'm what not listening have, i can't, I can't no talking. we're skipping that it. what she calls illegal immigrants and drug traffickers despite having a drug addiction of her own and committing crimes repeatedly the problem is is when they enter illegally or drug trafficking which is the wall the wall, I suppose, is is not to be like, we don't want immigrants. It's to control who does come into our country. Our slaves. Because we have so many illegal immigrants in this country right now. I live in California. I There, there are so, so many. Taking our job. Now, her fetishization yeah. of Jewish men has crossed several anti-Semitic lines as well. She appropriated the faith, dressed as an IDF officer, which is disturbed on yeah, several levels, wears Israeli Judaism. flag, which is not so associated weird. with Judaism, like the other than just as an ethnic state, regarded Ethan Klein as Jewy when he asked for an extra 5% from her already generous 45% pay to give extra money to the crew for their hard work, demands the crew gets fired and replaced, which means they would lose that money. The other day, they had a doctor talking about COVID-19. I was like, eee. I think they need to start with just getting rid of all the interns that work for them, like Dan and all them. They, they fucking, they're, they're just awful. They're just awful. Refuses to listen to Ethan when he hired- I never even heard that. I never even heard that. Oh my god. It's her disrespectful rhetoric regarding Jewish people and their faith, calls Jewish people anti-Semitic if they don't accept her as Jewish, even though she still believes in Christ, claims Jews are in the upper echelon of the world, which has always been the excuse why supremacists used Joel to all Jewish Twitter people. Where's the star of David like an accessory on her clothes or as jewelry? Commented on how she might only be interested in her fiance because of his Jewish background alone, disregarding his humanity as an artist. I think it's like fun now. He's like a toy. It's like, oh, I got a Middle Eastern, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm, minimizes sure. Ethan and Ela's Jewish Little backgrounds collection. to emphasize her own supposed Jewish identity as an Israeli. People can say they're a Jew and I can't say Jew lunch. I have to stop because I'm white. Like, I can't, I can't sing songs because I'm white. That feels racist to me. Like, you're not white, so you can't sing that song. Okay. Hey, I'm, like, promoting this, like, culture. Yeah, but you're kind of, like, uh, this is kind of, like, cultural appropriation, isn't it? Appreciation. Right, okay. That's the I think it is. Uh, the American Jews that get angry, which aren't real Jews, you're like... <laughs> What? It's like, this is kind what? of like cultural appropriation, isn't it? Calm down. You're from Ventura, California. <laughs> like, you know, you don't know the no. struggle. He's what? Israeli. They were slaves in e Egypt. Like, he wasn't a weren't. slave. His ancestors were. Your ancestors weren't. The Pharaoh was in don't they Egypt have the same ancestors? <laughs> this is kind of. That's like saying, what the hell? No, I'm sorry. The the That's like, you know, before the transatlantic slave trade, there was slavery in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa. And what she's saying is like the equivalent of, of, of telling a black American, your, your ancestors weren't enslaved in Africa, but hers were. It's like, bro, we have the same ancestors. The f- Kind of like cultural appropriation, isn't it? Wait, why? How do you, wait, what? Because he's in the land of the free, wait, the free. Anyways, this is you know that, Wait, hold on. You know that Jews who, who moved to Europe, which is where my ancestors come mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. have a common origin. That's what being Jewish is. Yeah. Right, but they weren't exiled. That's why they live in Europe. No. So what? Where'd they come from? You where'd they come from, Trisha? Why, know, why, why do you think like they're there? cultural appropriation, isn't it? And hides behind her secular... What does she think? Why does she think they're there? Why does she think there's an issue with Israel? What is she thinking? She, I mean, I mean, whatever, whatever. Jewish boyfriend whatever, to deflect whatever. valid criticisms over her appropriating the Jewish faith. Furthermore, 
While Palestinian protests were globally rising to support Palestine against Israel's genocidal and colonial intentions on Gaza, where Israel targets mm-hmm. families to end Palestinian generations, hold them in an open-air concentration camp, contaminate water sources, steal their houses and give them to Brooklyn Jewish colonizers, bombs apartment buildings, hospital roads, and mosques, imprisoning and torturing hundreds of Palestinian children a month, all of which are crimes against humanity and considered international war crimes, Trisha decided to mock the Palestinians during their genocide, which is still going on today. Can you stay up all night? When your boyfriend's Israeli identity and all the comments are free Palestine and you're just trying to figure out where Palestine even is and why it needs to be freed, why would you post this? Oh my God. I mean, this was during the age of Trisha being woke, right? Why would you even post this? This isn't cute. This is not a, oh my gosh, I didn't know that gravity is a real thing. This is not a cute thing at all. And you can be Israeli and still recognize what your government is doing to Palestinians. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Let's keep going. This is not cute at all. Anyways, we're for Israel, not Palestine. Oh, oh. Oh. What do you mean we're not for Israel? Okay, we're for all people, but Israel all the way. You don't even Trisha know Pierce what is the Israel child of is. White women's tears. When she cries, people sympathize with her and forgive her despite physically assaulting and raping her partners, demeaning no black, Hispanic, face. and Japanese people, wrecking families, mocking the Palestinian genocide, disrespecting the Jewish faith, fetishizing the Jewish ethnicity, and emotionally abusing those around her. She knows and expects her tears to wash away her accountability, and people who've been brainwashed into thinking a white woman crying over her own misdeeds and abuse is a proper apology start attacking the masses who actually want to hold her accountable. Never once did she apologize to Ethan Klein, Ela Klein, Moses Hackman, Jason Nash, or the black, Japanese, and Hispanic community. She just cried, made fake promises, and continued her entitled behavior. So why didn't anyone call her out sooner? People did call her out. People did call her out sooner. People have been calling her out her entire career. But the gag was supposed to be that everything's just a troll. It's just a troll. So she kept getting away with it because then when she would cry... The fans would relate with her. They would appreciate her openness. And the cycle continued, hopefully until now. Trisha Paytas was framed as a mentally ill victim on the Frenemies podcast, which renewed her reputation with a new audience from the H3H3 podcast. They were, in general, unaware of the details behind Trisha Paytas' career on YouTube and accepted her by proxy of H3H3's podcast. She was introduced as having borderline personality disorder, which was self-diagnosed, which explained away her claim to disassociative identity disorder, which was also self-diagnosed, and her claim to being a trans man in a drag queen's body while in the same breath, saying she has no gender dysphoria and is perfectly okay with her female body to those unfamiliar to the symptoms of borderline personality disorder. And let me reiterate Borderline personality disorder is not inherently abusive or toxic. Princess Diana and Marilyn Monroe were driven Mm -hmm. to help people because of their inner pain and good heart. And still, I am meeting patients like her, rejected by family and past friends. It is hard to find words to express their lives. I'm usually talking. Yeah. Now that just a bad person like Onisia on Rice Gum and Social Repos. The reason her claim to dissociative identity disorder and borderline personality disorder is an issue is she claims to have several mental illnesses and uses them to justify her poor behavior, which stigmatizes the mental illness to her audience unfamiliar with mental health. Instead of taking accountability for her actions, as she claims, she uses mental illnesses as an excuse for her racist, abusive, and damaging behavior. So much, yeah. I mean, because so I much. had my blackout moments where I woke up and I was like, I didn't want to do yeah, that. No, I, understand. I don't know. I, I get it. I get it. So. And- and just so that's, that's that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt anyone, even in my relationship. Now I I, I am trying to like sabotage it to not make it last because I don't want to be harmful to anybody, and I am. I'm dangerous to myself. I'm dangerous to other people, and it's it's bad. Okay, you know? so stop. So, and so and so, Ethan, can you see how when you say something like this is a weaponized, you're attacking me? That's that's tough territory for her right now. You got it? Yeah. No. I you understand? I, okay. Yeah. So for so sure, so here's a. <laughs> I, I I hit him last summer, and it doesn't matter the circumstances. Like I hit him, and that gets thrown in my face all the time and I it's fine but I'm not I'm not a, a domestic abuser that he broke up with you because you started like punching him he's taking his head no oh, okay y- you said I could say everything I did not punch him <laughs> you said that's why you broke up with me because I punched you <laughs> she's like how dare I you like said this. that okay I barely touched you I thought you were in the fitness oh sorry someone did say that I said I never abused it to you 
She gave Jason PTSD, which Moses might end up developing too, impairing him from developing a relationship with someone else for a while. She aggravated Ethan's depression and anxiety and his Tourette's until he reached a point of physical pain while mocking and insulting him for his tics. I'm currently editing the video, but there's been recent revelations that I found out that Moses might actually have autism, according to what Trisha has revealed. What's that? No, oh, whatever. Yeah, Trisha, Trisha yeah. also <laughs> said her ex and then, had um, Asperger's. I, so much love. I love that you're autistic. I love calling people back because it's so cool. Um, <laughs> I don't know why then, she does this. She she does these little, these which little can... comments and trying to make it like, but it's so cool. It's so cool that you do that. Like, it's so cool that you have Tourette's. I love that you have Tourette's. I don't think she's not, she, she is trying to diss you. She's not trying to say you're cute. She's trying to diss you contextualizes her comments regarding a I don't know why she does that like unprovoked personality she did that to she did that to Jason her ex Jason and you know I was like whatever they're both toxic because he he would do it back I, I couldn't tell who started it but when when you see her do it to Moses to Ethan it's like why do you keep this doing that? Can we talk about water while we have sex? This guy also thinks he's water. I, I, I've deleted the video. Can we talk about video water? Where he thinks he won't die. Where he thinks he's he's water. He truly feels that he's born water. He's work. I, I'm not. I'm not saying this to be mean. Like he is a very socially awkward person. He might have something like Asperger's or something like that. So like it's it's like it's very cringe. But holy shit! Not only that, but there's also speculation that she made him get rid of his four kittens because he was paying too much attention to his kitty cats than to her. Even my cats. Dude, even stop. Watch cats because he's like. Down, they they ruin his shit. Like the fact that you guys are. Moses doesn't cats. want his cats. You're the reason we keep having to come home. You're the reason my man's keep trying to leave in the day. We could be out having pina coladas by the pool, but we gotta come home and visit these little bitches. What is one's name? Rain. Rain is it your favorite, right? Rain's gotta go. Then. Dad. Dad. Become. You're not a dad, or you're a dad now. I am. I have four kittens. Is video over? That's all you post on your Instagram story. That's the only text message I get from your kittens of your video video of your kittens. Moses? Because yeah, they're cute. So he'll keep them at the museum. Okay, so y'all like saw water. this really cute video that Moses posted about how he saved the kitten from being all tangled up. Everyone liked it. No one brought up anything bad. Someone pointed out that um, Trisha made him get rid of his three cats. Um, and that uh, he was allergic to cats and that he never had them but i would like to say otherwise and not only that but moses has actually commented that he wouldn't find it too surprising if she actually killed his cats she's Whoa. inflicted psychological harm onto others which they now have to deal with and characterize herself as the victim she aggravates others mental illnesses without consideration because she believes her feelings are the only ones that matter mm -hmm. she belittles and projects malice onto other creators with mental illnesses That's why hurting their feelings because she doesn't respect anyone's mental illness Furthermore, it's quite evident that Trisha Paytas is obsessed with herself, believing every man who wants to have sex with her, every person who critiques her as a bigot, <laughs> and even when a black unarmed man is murdered, she and her feelings about it, a white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman who burns her skin to appropriate an ethnic look without the violence that comes with it, is still the center focus of a Black Lives Matter video. And let me make this very clear. She plays dumb, but she's not dumb. She's mm -hmm. academically illiterate and possesses hardly any intelligence regarding basic geography, Bingo. culture, history, or science. But she possesses a high level of intelligence and social manipulation. No good person yes. exposes their mental breakdowns for millions of views in cash. No good person exposes private fights with unwilling participants for Here's millions of views in cash. No good person it objectifies and fetishizes people on the basis yeah. of their race for millions of views in cash. And finally, no good person flaunts how much money they have when there's a pandemic and rising income inequality, housing prices, stealing away her audience's economic stability. All around this. Hey, you want to Seven thousand dollars in coaching. Coach is trash. It's literally like, for well, I won't even say what, but it's trash. That's like eating a buffet in front of starving people. Whether she has mental illnesses is neither here nor there. Frankly, a majority of people are afflicted with mental illnesses, including those around her, yet they manage theirs in the privacy of their own circle. Trisha markets off it, is excused mm -hmm. because of it, yep. abuses others with it, and she yep. knows it. Once again, yep. as just a reminder, she tries seducing Ethan Klein away from his wife just because Ethan didn't like Trisha. She knowingly abandoned very young girls to a party with alcohol where they later got raped and the video filming it was released as daily content. She physically abused Jason and Moses to a point where Jason legitimately feared for his life and developed PTSD. She is the Onision of Valley Girls. Okay, so what did y'all think? What did y'all think? Um, good job, Huang Li. Stop, don't move to the next video. I don't know who that is. Um, Huang Li is posting. Why? Um, other, you know, you see they only have 54 subscribers. This is a new channel. Um, but they are posting 
And, you know, keep it up. I actually saw some little tidbits that I had never seen or realized before. So, um, yo, that was crazy. Thank you for watching with me. Because you could have just watched it by yourself. But you watched it with me. Um, I'm going to go to bed now. I'm going to attempt to go to bed. Yes, I will attempt. I I will attempt to go to bed. Until next time, guys. Much love, much luck. Peace out.